Midweek Murders contains graphic and explicit content. Listener discretion is advised. <laughs> You're listening to Midweek Murders, and that means that it's time to talk about crime. This is Joe. Hello, and this is Sandra. Hi. <laughs> that was fucking awkward. <laughs> it's better to say. I'm Sandra, and this is... Hello, I'm Joe. It's not, because uh, you're basically introducing it as... Uh, let's talk about crime. Uh, I'm Sandra, and this is... Joe. <laughs> like, how how do I come into that? I can't be upbeat and preppy and like, Hey, listeners, I'm Joe! It's just like... And this is... Joe. Obviously. As it has been for the past four weeks. Like... <laughs> the fuck do you expect it to be frank <laughs> oh it's true do 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 i can't remember how the trumpets go <laughs> oh, this week's introduction great. is jazz <laughs> We're going to talk about the Snoopy murder, which was a very a scandalous moment for the Swedish national news, I guess. Like, I was quite young when it happened, and I remember... Sandra, you it... were born 75. <laughs> well, metaphorically, yes, but... At at that time, I think I was 14. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. I was 14. And I remember it being on the news. And I was like, what in the hell? Because Sweden is one of the most secular countries in the world. And for us to have like, okay, let's start from the beginning. Sorry. I got Always my... Always a good place to start. <laughs> I got my information from Mission Investigate or Uppdrag Granskning. They had a docuseries about the case, which came out quite recently, and also Wikipedia. Wiki wiki! Wah. Wiki wiki wah! I also got my... What the fuck is it? Information. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say a Swedish word, so I was prepared to help you. And then it was information. Yeah, I got my information from Wikipedia and also my brain. <laughs> so, in uh, 10th of January 2004, Alexandra Fosmo was shot. But they didn't know that at first because the one that called the police was the neighbor who was shot two times but survived. And his name was Daniel. Now I can't say it in Swedish or English. Daniel. <laughs> Sorry, I completely poo pooed your lovely pronunciation there. Okay, Daniel Linde. And uh, first, for the English listeners, we're just going to call him Daniel. Daniel, yeah. But at first, nobody know, knew what was... The trouble I've seen Nobody knows my sorrow. <laughs> so, Daniel calls the police and the police arrests Sara Svensson at her childhood home in uh, no where they were shot, like in the more southern part of Sweden. Sorry, 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 sorry. 
Excuse me. Sorry. And um, quite early on, they understand that Sara or Sarah thinks that she is on a mission to save her soul. And they were like, "Uh oh, this smells like indoctrination or brainwashing or or whatever you want to call it." They kind of keyed into the fact that she sounded not of sound mind when they arrested her. So during the prosecution of Sarah, they understand that she has been getting these anonymous messages on her phone from what she thinks is God or somebody working for God. And that obviously sounded crazy. All of the messages that she said that she had gotten were deleted, but with the technology that they had at the time, they managed to get those messages from her phone. So she had turned her phone in. She had said that she had done the murder of Alexandra Fosmo and also the attempted murder of Daniel. But from the text messages that they were able to retrieve, even though they were deleted, there was hundreds of messages saying that what you need to do for God is murder Alexandra and murder Daniel. So this was very confusing at the time. I remember when it when it came on the news and everything and I, and everyone in Sweden was like what in the hell? But it unearthed what do you call it? Like it came to light this whole fucked up situation. Unearthed is fine. Revealed. Yeah, it revealed. Uncovered. It uncovered this very weird sect in Knutby, which is very close to Stockholm and a part of the county where a lot of people go to study. And what it revealed about that sect, which they wouldn't call themselves at the time, in that community they quickly unearthed that one of the key players in that church was a woman called Osa Valdau who said that she was the bride of Christ and the people engaged in that church also called her the bride of Christ or the queen of heaven Oh, uh, that's what it meant. Mm, which is very, very problematic in a very general kind of sense. But in this particular congregation, it was extremely problematic, which wouldn't come out until later. But Sara was prosecuted by the state and also they tracked those text messages that she had gotten from, air quotes, God, to her minister or pastor, Helge Fosmo. Or Fosmo. No, I said it in English twice. Fuck it. Uh, he... Helge Fosmo. <laughs> Helge Fosmo. He, in himself, turned out to be extremely problematic because he had murdered his first wife on the 18th December of 1999. Reportedly. Yeah, well, allegedly, but I think he did do that. Uh, Yeah, but you can't, for legal reasons, say that he did it if he hasn't been prosecuted for it. Well, they, they did kind of, like, throw it out there, the prosecution, that he might have killed his first wife as well. Yeah, when, but just trust me, you can't legally say that he has killed his first wife. You have to put in allegedly. Yeah, yeah, no, I do trust you. I just feel like I don't care because nobody listens except for the bot. <laughs> Look, if we have to cite our sources, then you can't <laughs> accuse people of murder. 
Okay, fine. He was accused of his first wife's murder. Helly. Helen. Sorry. <laughs> say, say them in Swedish. It's fine. The more you say them in Swedish, the more I'm going to be able to replicate the sounds. Okay, Helen. Because in 1999, she was found dead in her bathtub with a toxic concentration of an opioid found in prescription painkillers that had been prescribed for Helge Fosmo. And she also had a wound or a hole in her temple that at the time they thought that she had banged her head on the faucet of the bathtub. <laughs> I can hear you pouring beer. I was going to mute myself, but then I thought you might need my input. Turns out I was just spending the whole time sassing you. <laughs> yeah. You're wrong! They did bring it up as the prosecution point, and he was found not guilty. Yeah, so he wasn't prosecuted for it. <laughs> I'm going to say you're misunderstanding me. But no, I, I'm, I'm understanding you, but the legal term of a prosecution is to win your case against X, Y, and Z. So if the charges oh. were dropped because there was insufficient evidence or whatever, then he hasn't been prosecuted for it. Oh, okay. I thought it was like you... Because at the time when she actually was allegedly murdered in 19 You're welcome, boss. <laughs> In 1999, they just ruled it out as a accident. Accidental death, yeah. Then they yeah. reopened it as a possible attempted murder or murder, but there isn't sufficient evidence to charge him for it. So that was all dropped, and his prison yes. time was for Alexandra. Exactly. Uh, See, ich verstehe du. But what is it called then? Like Doom when cults. you. <laughs> <laughs> when it's like. Charging. It's a charge. Yeah, it's a charge for that crime. Well, alleged crime. <laughs> he was. <laughs> he was sentenced, obviously, for conspiring to murder his second wife. And his next door neighbor, which digging more into it, his neighbor was a husband to a woman that he was having a, an affair with. And Sarah was on trial and did a full confession and told them all about how she got the gun. And she was sentenced to institutional psychiatric care and that makes sense to me because after actually digging into this case which I did from a very early age which is obviously concerning but I was very interested in what happened it turns out that Sarah she was called the nanny in Swedish media because she had worked for the Fosmo family. She had first moved to Knutby and she had joined the congregation because they were like, oh, we're so happy you're here, blah, blah, blah. And then they had, for a very long time, systematically abused her. So at first, she was, like, loved by all, very welcomed, hugged. Everyone was like, oh, my God, you're saved, blah, 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 you're going to go to heaven. And then Helge Fosmos told her that God talked through him and that God had told him that she needed to have sex with him. So I'm just going to say at this point that sex, Alarm bells. Alarm bells, yes. A sect is when people tell you you're not allowed to speak to people outside because they're not saved or they're not blah, blah, blah. Like, it doesn't 
matter which kind of religion. It's like if you can't speak to people outside of your own congregation, that is alarm bell number one. Alarm bell number two is when people say that this D is going to save you from hell. If people are going to say that they're going to save you with their genitalia, please call your family. You're in a sect. Unless it's me. (laughs) So it started out with them being like, oh, you're chosen by God to have sex with me. And then it turned into this thing where Osa Valdau, which is the congregation's Bride of Christ, which is a very extreme statement to make. But people who are that manipulative and that full of themselves, they search for a community where that can be used. So Osa Valdau psychologically broke her down because she told everyone that she was evil incarnated. So it started out with Helge Fosmo trying to convince her that she was doing God's mission. And then Osa Valdau broke her down by convincing her that she had sinned so badly that she was not a person anymore. This, of course, was during a couple of years. Obviously, they started out being like super like attentive, super like, I see you, you're a great person, you can do God's mission in the world, blah, blah, blah. It started out really positive, and then they broke her bit by bit by telling her that she wasn't, she was so sinful that she didn't deserve to live. And Helge Fosmo told her that he was battling demons for some weird, inexplicable reason, that he forced her to move into his bedroom for like eight months, tending to him while he was battling demons for the Bride of Christ. And after that, she was so ostracized by the congregation. And Helge told her, you are so sinful. You are a slave. And you're lucky that I am your master because I am a kind master. And you will do this for God or you will forever be condemned. And... In Osa Valdau's case, she was dubbed the Bride of Christ because she was a pastor in another congregation, like a youth pastor. And then they said, you can't work here anymore because your relationships to the young people are concerning. Because she started a sexual relationship with a man or a boy that was 15 when she was 25 and they couldn't prove that they just had like suspicions so they didn't tell the police because they were like well you seem a bit pedo so you can't work here anymore you're fired he took Osa Valdau to his parents house which was in Knutby in the rules that they didn't have a relationship, that she was just like a friend. And then they married when he graduated from upper secondary school. He was 18. Is that upper secondary school? Just secondary school. Okay, secondary. Sixth form. But it's Swedish, so it's whatever you would call it. We call it... Upper secondary school. Gymnasium is what we call it. Just sounded like you said gymnasium with a fire. Yeah. Then. It is, we call it gymnasium. But oh, it's... that's weird. None of our <laughs> English listeners are going to be able to understand that. Okay. But he graduated from PE. <laughs> he was 18. He gets married to Orsa Valdo. His hold, parents. Hold, 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 hold on. Are we talking about Helga? Patrick Valdau, so Åsa's 
Okay, because you haven't mentioned that name at all so far. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. She was, <laughs> she was fired as a pastor. She had uncomfortable relationships with the youths. Youths. I can't say that. Youths. Just, just say teenage. <laughs> Teenagers. She had uncomfortable relationships with teenagers but they couldn't prove anything because none of the teenagers would say that she was being like it's less likely for a a teenage boy to accuse an older woman of making advances than it would be the other way around yeah which is interesting because i still don't think he realizes that she was abusing him. I don't yeah, that she was realize in a position this. of power and he was yeah. under her care. He still thinks, I think, that they were in love. That's obviously yeah. problematic. After her being fired because of weird things Relations. about... Relations. Yeah. So he takes her home to Knutby, where his parents are from and she becomes a pastor in that church in that church they become convinced that she is the bride of christ for some weird reason she performed a ritual where she was like devoting herself to christ and that's where the name bride of christ came from so it wasn't oh. just like a random assignment. There, there was a whole candles and nighttime slaughtering of goats type thing involved. <laughs> well, it wasn't really only about that. It was like they had had prophecies in their quotes that a prosecuted woman would come to their congregation and she would be the Bride of Christ, which I feel like is a bit like somebody got bored in their, like, their, uh, what is it called? When they go to church to worship the whole thing. Insanity. <laughs> their service? Yeah, that's a thing. I think that I, somebody... don't Don't question me on acts of the church. I'm the last person who's going to be able to answer any of these questions. Like, somebody got bored a couple of years before, and they were like, yeah, you know what? Bride of Christ is going to come to our church, and she's going to be a prosecuted woman, and she's going to be a mess balls. She's Do you gonna know be what like, they should have done? What? They should have given a call to the parish of Dibley and <laughs> asked to borrow their vicar. <laughs> I actually understand that reference, <laughs> but damn. Somebody told them that the Bride of Christ is going to come to our congregation and she's going to be the prologue for the returning of Christ. So she came to the congregation and they were like, oh my God, she was prosecuted by her other congregation and she is the Bride of Christ. And she, as a very manipulative sociopath was like of course i am i am god's intended wife which is crazy but she was extremely likable people were like oh my god she could see you she really connected to people she was really blah 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 you know all of that shit so she formed a personal sect around her as the bride of christ she brought helge fosmo to that congregation because they had met a couple of years earlier and she was like he is the voice of god he speaks from god to you and they were like okay but he was also a very very manipulative person and he came in being like, yeah, we're going to, all of us are going to heaven. You all are chosen. Uasa is the bride of Christ. This is like the reckoning. History as we know it ends here. He made them feel chosen 
and she made them feel chosen because of how extremely manipulative they were. And then Helge Fosmo obviously got in trouble because he has a tendency to allegedly murder his wives. He got incarcerated for the second attempt on his current wife, which was Osa's little sister. So Alexandra Fosmo was Osa Valdau's little sister. Sara, I feel really bad for her because she was so dehumanized for so long that she thought she was, air quotes, wrong and sinful in a way that she couldn't understand. She was just trying to do the right thing. And they treated her so badly for so long. Like they got the whole community to stop saying hello to her. It was like she didn't exist where she lived. She thought that God was speaking to her through anonymous text messages sent from Helge that said that if you just do this for God, mercy is going to fall on you, you sinful devil worshipper. It was so crazy. But she was obviously, as I said, sentenced to psychological help. So she's out in the in society now, which I think is not that bad because I feel like she was abused in a way that most people can't even imagine being abused. Like she was sexually assaulted. She was dehumanized. She was ostracized from a whole village for years before this happened. When she had gotten the text messages about having to kill Alexandra, she tried to kill her with a hammer. She got pushed out of the village. They didn't call the police, which is crazy. But Helge had told his other congregation members that he had dreams of Alexandra dying. He was like, it's so horrible. In my dreams, Alexandra is dead, blah, blah, blah. And people, when she actually was killed, people thought that he had premonitions, prophesies. Premonitions, yeah. Yeah. So they thought that he was speaking from God, which was also crazy, but you know. I mean, that kind of sums up the problem with fanatical religious groups, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Watching the documentary that Mission Investigate had done, it's so clear that Osa Valdau has so much internalized misogyny that she treated women in her congregation like shit. She had these chosen women in the group that were like, yeah, you have been chosen by God to be my servers. So they spent all of their money that they earned from their jobs on her. They would wait on her all the time. They would give her massages. They would cook her food. They would buy her clothes. They would do everything for her. There was also a a stipulation that any member of this cult had to give 10% of their earnings towards the cult. And also that I think that she convinced the others so much that she was chosen by God that they didn't see it happening in the beginning. It was like all hugs and like joy and warmth and meaning. She would provide meaning in life for her subjugates or like servers or like stuff. And then the more the years went on, the worse she would treat them. So she would say that somebody is wrong. You need to take their children away from that person, which they did. She would say that 
you've done this right for so long and she'd been like praising them and then suddenly she would get violent hit them and jump on them and she would like tell them that they had to move into a shed in her garden where they weren't allowed to sleep on mattresses she would bind them she would treat other women so incredibly badly that I feel like this is crazy that all this went on without the Swedish government being involved in any way. Because in 2004, Alexandra is murdered. Helge is put to prison. Osa Valda is still in the congregation. In 2020, the trial begins against Osa Valdau. Urban, one of her ministers or pastors in the congregation that had sexually assaulted a 17-year-old and also forced a lot of the other women to have sexual relationships with him because he said that it was a fight against the demons to get Jesus there for Osa Valdo to marry. And looking on it from the outside, I understand that this is so fucking crazy. But it was Apologies like... if you picked up any bad language, listeners. <laughs> it was so crazy because of the fact that Sweden is such a secular state. But nobody took care to investigate the children and the teenagers in the cult. Nobody made sure that they were all right because they went to school because homeschooling isn't allowed in Sweden, which is good. But they went to school in Knutby where some of their teachers was a part of the cult. So they were like brainwashed from day one. Some of them tried to kill themselves and then they were further ostracized in the congregation for trying to kill themselves because that would make them be in hell. Mm, It's the ultimate sin. So like for them, there was no escape. The girl who was sexually abused when she was 17, Urban, started making sexual advances towards her when she was 14 years old. And Urban is like maybe 20 years her senior. He was another minister or pastor that she brought into the congregation who would abuse power. Like, he probably looked for a situation where they would treat him as a god, because they did. They were like, well, he is speaking directly from God, which Osa said that he was. And he had sexual relationships with a lot of the women in the congregation, because he said that his dick would be their salvation, which... Again, alarm bells. If someone says that you need to have sex with them to be saved, it's a fucking cult. Well, this girl, she went to Oasa, told her about the sexual abuse from Urban. Oasa made her lay down on her stomach and then jumped on her four times. With her parents in the room. And I feel like Osa should be locked up forever. I don't want Osa in our society. I don't want Urban in our fucking society. Both of them are still out in our society. Well, not in our, in my, well, in Sweden. It's crazy. And that's why no one lives in Sweden. (laughs) Well, we have a very low population, but... (laughs) I feel like what I couldn't understand about this whole case is, one, why Helge didn't get prosecuted for the murder of his first wife. 
Can you tell me a bit about that? <laughs> I feel like the first hour of this podcast has been about cults, and now we're on the murders. Well, it's 30 minutes, but... <laughs> so, how do you say her name? The first wife. Yeah. Helene, or Helen, if you want to say Helen. Helene. Yeah. So Helen. <laughs> <laughs> now you know my struggle in every episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want you to try and pronounce the opiate that was found in our system. That will be fun. Loxy blah blah blah. Doxy blah blah blah. I don't. Uh huh. Yeah, know. that one. Wait, wait. Let me do it. Dextropoxine peen. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Fin. Sure, let's go with that. Mm-hmm. How would you say it? Uh, Dextropropoxifene. Okay, that does sound more accurate. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like it could be a thing. So she was found, like aforementioned, with a hole in her skull and a toxic concentration of dextropropoxifene in her blood system. Originally, the case was dropped because the hole in her skull wasn't able to be linked to anything, Um, so it was difficult to relate that back to whether that was caused by her falling over in the bath, whether that could have been a blunt instrument, The thing about the dextro is that there was none found in her stomach, which is probably the most interesting part about the autopsy report, in that you'd expect anything ingested orally to still be present in the stomach upon autopsy after death, but there was nothing in her stomach. Um, So there was one prosecutor or coroner, I can't remember what his position was that said the most likely route of administration would have been either IV, so injected straight into the bloodstream, or either administered vaginally or anally. Mm-hmm. Again, um, if it was administered vaginally or anally, you'd expect to find some in those cavities. I don't know whether they did or not. I couldn't find They might find... have checked. Yeah, I can't find the autopsy reports anywhere. All of the media coverage just says that she was found with the toxic substance. It's interesting to note that dextropropoxifene was readily available at the time of the crime as a prescription drug, but has been withdrawn from almost all markets It's been withdrawn from the US, it's been withdrawn from the EU, UK, Sweden particularly, because of the problems raised about its efficacy versus its toxicity. So all of the drugs, when they're put on the market, are given a therapeutic index A therapeutic index is basically the difference between how much you need to take to get the therapeutic dose, which is whatever you're taking it for. In this case, it would be pain relief and the toxic dose. Now, most drugs have quite a wide therapeutic window, which is obviously ideal. You don't want your toxic dose to be too close to your therapeutic dose. But Dextro has an incredibly narrow therapeutic index. Uh, which caused a lot of questions about 20 years after it was widely available on the market, which is what's caused its withdrawal. Um, It also becomes particularly toxic when it's combined with alcohol, usually because of the higher doses that are required. So because it's a weak opioid, you need to take a lot more of it to be able to get that therapeutic dose than you would cocodamol, morphine, all of the other opiates that are available. So if she were to have taken it 
with alcohol, you would expect that that toxic dose would have dropped significantly, whereas the therapeutic dose would have stayed the same. So you're narrowing that window even further. A lot of opiates can cause central nervous system depression, respiratory depression and cardiac depression. And depression in this case is just the that system being less responsive. So CNS depression is your central nervous system stops being responsive. So you're less receptive to pain. You're less receptive to external stimulus, which is usually what painkillers are taken for. But respiratory depression and cardiac depression are particular problems when you're taking medication in that they then make it harder to breathe and they make your heart work harder to provide the same amount of oxygenated blood that it would normally. Mm. So it's perfectly possible that in the dose that she had taken, she had experienced the respiratory depression and the cardiac depression to cause death, particularly if it were mixed with alcohol. Mm. And when she was found, um, it was in the bath, but there was no water found in her lungs, which basically rules out drowning. Mm. So you can be pretty much sure that her cause of death was the administration of the drugs and that she was dead before she was in the bathtub. Okay. And not even like unconscious before she was in the bathtub, because if she was unconscious, she would have still been breathing. And then you would expect to find water in her lungs. And I think she was found the next day. I think there was water in the bathtub because I think the first response kind of thought that it was drowning. Yeah, which would be normal. You hit your head on the faucet, you fall into the bathtub, you're unconscious you aspirate the water, you drown. Mm -hmm. But given that there there was no water found in her lungs, you can rule that out, which means that it's perfectly possible that her head injury was caused by falling on the faucet, Mm -hmm. which would be why there was no correlation between blunt weapon trauma and the wound that she had on her head. It couldn't have been caused by a hammer because it was caused by the faucet. Was that ruled out that it couldn't be blunt force trauma? Well, it would have been blunt force trauma, but blunt force trauma wasn't the cause of death. Okay, so the drugs was definitely a cause of death. Yeah, the drugs were the cause of death, but the most interesting point was that there was none found in her stomach. So we don't know how it was administered, whether it be IV, whether it be crushed up tablets administered through any other orifice. But we're basically ruling out the ingestion of the drugs, which pretty much rules out suicide. I don't think there's been any cases that I know of having studied forensic science where someone's decided to commit suicide via OD and has administered any other way than oral or IV. Okay, which kind of leads towards the fact that it was murder but again without knowing the route of administration 100 percent there's not enough scientific evidence to be able to say that this was the route and therefore this is the chain of events Mm -hmm. so it kind of was that helge allegedly didn't have a congregation of minions to do the murder for him so it kind of had to take things into his own hands yeah or obviously not had to but he was a fucking psychopath so he is still incarcerated uh i think he was up for a parole in 2020 which i think might not have happened it got but... turned down by the court of appeal yeah yeah so he was initially eligible for parole this year but they blocked that request Oh, thank God, because Sweden is good in very many ways. Like, they don't have the death penalty, blah, blah, blah. But there are also very, a lot of horrible crimes gets very short sentences. But Helge got 
I think 25, 20, 27. 24. 24. 24. Okay, yeah. yeah. So that's obviously maybe not enough, but it's something. Because in 2020, the trials began for three other pastors of the sect, the Knutby sect. And Peter, he accused himself, Osa Valdau and Urban, the other weirdo. And for him, he accused himself of abuse, like physical abuse and something else. I mean, if if you're doing it yourself, it's more of a confession. Yeah, well, he confessed to the crimes, but I think he also brought charges against... Yeah, so that would be an accusation, but against himself would be a confession. Okay, they were all sentenced, but they got, like, nothing. They got, like, no jail sentence. They had to pay a fine, and they got, like, what is it called when you're sentenced, but you get to be home, but you also need to do community service, I guess? Community service. Yeah, but I also feel like they got off too mildly. They shouldn't be out at all. It's so crazy. Absolute bonkers. (laughs) (laughs) Do you have any? Do you have anything else to say about the case? No. No. (laughs) I'm done. I actually found this one the least interesting. Did you? I found it so interesting, but that's probably because it's about a sect, and I'm like, oh my god. My job is to bring in the forensics role, and this case was cut and dry. She admitted to it. No questions asked. Let's move on. Helge Fosmo, I've heard that he has, like, a blog and stuff from prison. He got married from prison, and he does a lot of, like, internet presence. I would just like to say to you... You're a cunt. You're a horrible man, and you should stay in prison for all time, and please stop being on the internet, because it just... Stop re-downloading our videos. It's skewing our numbers. (laughs) We don't have videos. I <laughs> meant audio. Do you want to try the Swedish pronunciations again? Pronunciations. Urban like Iben. Pronunciations, Urban. please. You could do it. You could do it. I believe in you. Not until you say the word right. Say it again. Pronunciation. Pronunciations. There we go. Hey, poof. That was Wee. Let's, let's, let's. Okay. Urban like in Uber, but Urban. Urban. Yeah. That's Helene. not like Uber at all. Helian like Helen, but Helian. <laughs> Helian. Yeah, that's really good. Wow. Wow, that better. was patronizing. Dot JPEG. <laughs> I was impressed. Knutby. Knutby. Yeah, almost. No, that was exactly the same. <laughs> He'll get there. It's fine. Nobody cares about that place anyway. Natsby! Natsby! You been to Natsby! You been to Natsby? You heard what fucking happened in Natsby? It was fucking mental! <laughs> Okay, thank you for listening to this week's episode of Maybe Murders. I'll see you next week. Ciao, ciao. Hey, Dora. Can you say hey, Dora? Hey, Dora. Are you talking to me or Boodil? You. Because you were using your patronizing animal voice. (laughs) Like you were trying to teach a parakeet to say fuck off. Can you say fuck off? Can you? Oh, the clever little birdie. Oh, clever bird. Hey, door. Ho, door. <laughs> Hold the door. Good lord, that was that too was soon. so so too soon. Yeah, too soon. Hashtag too soon. Okay, bye.